Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be um, continuing my video guide of beginner hamster care. It was like beginner hamster care guide. If you missed that video, I will leave a link in the description box below. Um, so in that video, I talked about when you're picking your first hamster, um, your cage, and I also talked about to expect when you first get your hamster. Now, <laughs> if you hear any noise in this video, I'm gonna let it know now. Like a quick disclaimer, it's, it's Ash. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the difference between spot cleaning and deep cleaning your hamster cage. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is spot cleaning your hamster's cage. Um, this is something that you want to do once a week. Now when you're spot cleaning, you're not removing all of your hamster's bedding. You're only removing the bedding which is soiled or pooped in as well. Some hamsters will use the same area. Some hamsters will use their sand bath as their pee area. Um, once you have your hamster for a while and you're cleaning multiple times, you can kind of start to pick up and notice, especially if you notice where they spend a lot of their time at during their nesting time like when they're laying down. Um, you can definitely start to pick up on when your hamster is more than likely peeing and pooping at. So I would definitely recommend checking this area if you have no idea where your hamster is peeing or pooping the most. I would check where they spend the most of their time at. Also another way to figure this out quickly on if you don't, if you still don't know exactly where they spend the most of their time is, is when you feed them, watch them when they grab their food and see where they run and take it to because most hamsters um, will end up taking their food of course to their little home so this is a quick and easy way to also find out where your hamster is spending most of their time at so there is spot cleaning you just want to remove this part of the bedding so sometimes you might have to dig down into the bedding a lot more um, and mess up their tunnels it is possible to mess up their tunnels during this process It is possible to mess up their tunnels during this. <laughs> it is possible to mess up their tunnels during this process, just because it is also inevitable, especially depending on how much they're making tunnels and burrowing. So you just want to remove this bedding out. Um, it's usually not a lot, probably like a little bit of a corner. Um, so you just want to remove this bedding. And also if you're finding their food stash down there, definitely make sure when you're adding in your fresh bedding um, to put in some fresh food in there as well because you don't want to stress your hamster out. So it helps to replenish that food that they had hoarded down there with some new fresh food. You don't have to put a lot, you just put like a little bit um, and it'll keep them a little bit more calm when they find their area again. So their spot cleaning, you also want to clean out any of their substrates. So their sand, dirt, but, um, different substrates such as sand, dirt, or anything else that you have mixed in there. Definitely go through, sift it out, and clean it out. Um, you don't have to like completely empty this out if it doesn't need to be, especially if they're only um, like getting other beddings into their substrates. You can definitely just sift it and keep going. It takes like five, 10 minutes. You can get a sifter from your Dollar Tree for their like a dollar or two dollars. During this time, I also will clean the hamster wheel. So I just use a water, a water, a water and a vinegar mixture um, in the bottle. And I just clean the wheel down with paper towel because most hamsters or almost all hamsters will pee and or poop in their hamster wheel. So I definitely want to clean it. If you haven't cleaned it before, clean it and you will see how dirty it is. And you can always tell this, especially if you have a clear wheel. So I always make sure I wipe down the hamster wheel each time. And then I also like to clean the food and water bowls and bottles. And then during this time, I also like to make sure that the bottle is actually working. So I test out the bottle on it. And just tap on it just to make sure it's actually functioning correctly and it's not broken or leaking the water or anything like that that is basically it for the spot cleaning this is definitely something you do once a week usually spot cleaning takes like maybe 30 minutes depending on how much bedding i'm having to remove but it's usually only taking me about 30 minutes to do this spot cleaning is super quick and easy i know a lot of people wonder like when you have a larger cage like how are you spot well how are you cleaning this often don't you get tired of cleaning this isn't this a waste of bedding because you always have to replenish it but really you're only adding bedding in like once a month <laughs> Um, like actually a lot other times than that is just a little bit and just filling out a little bit of a corner and then of course I always like to um, add in my last bit of sprays or um, foraging herbs 
Um, sometimes during spa clean, I do take out one toy and just switch it for another, but I usually try to keep it as the same as possible, just since it's just a spa cleaning. Um, I don't want to be rearranging the hamster's cage every single week because that is just stressful. Unless you have a hamster that gets incredibly bored a lot of times, then you don't need to be rearranging it every week. I have a whole playlist for my hamster cage cleaning, so if you would like to see those, be sure to look in the description box below and I have a link down there. And I also have a link up here for you to watch in case you want to um, watch those as well. And one of them I do um, go through and actually do a voiceover while I'm cleaning the cage and trying to explain it even more. So if you feel like you need a bit of a refresher or you need like a talk through while you're cleaning your hamster cage, Definitely look for that video. I'm gonna try, if I remember which one it is, I'm gonna try to put it next to which one it is that I speak through it. But in case you need like that reference, that I do have that video there. Now we are going to get into deep cleaning. Deep cleaning, I will be completely honest, like filming those, I learned how long it actually takes me. Um, it used to take me when I first was doing them and taking my time and everything. It used to take me like a little over an hour just because I could never figure out how I wanted the setup to be. And I would spend a lot of time putting the accessories and taking them out. But now since filming, I see that I take about 45 minutes to do a deep clean. Definitely a lot better. So deep cleaning is the real clean. This is what you want to do once a month. Um, if you forget how often you did this or the last time that you did it in you know, these cage cleanings, it definitely helps you to write down, put in your phone as a reminder or anything like that that you like to use to keep track of things and then, like your to-do list. So deep cleaning, I do once a month. Deep cleaning is when you're moving. I'm gonna try to explain as best as I can. And I like to have two bags, one which, which is throwing away and the other one is for reusing inside the hamster cage because you do not want to throw away all the hamster bedding that will stress them out and it's also a waste to you because you don't need to throw away good clean bedding still because when you're spot cleaning you were also putting that bedding back on top so the bedding at the top is clean more than likely and your bedding at the bottom where your hamster spend a lot of time at is the one that's dirty i like to have two bags and i go through and you're gonna take out all the bedding out of the cage um, which can be a little bit time consuming. All the dirty bedding, which is usually at the, the bottom later, I usually just throw away. Um, I throw all that away. And then everything at the top, I put, he got the zoomies. <laughs> everything that's at the top of the um, cage of the bedding, I put in another bag, which means keep, especially if it's clean, not soiled or anything. So of course that bedding that's old, you throw that away and then the bedding that's still clean and good after i take all the bedding i wipe down the cage with the water and vinegar mixture again and i also like to use this time i would definitely recommend for people to check their hamster's cage to make sure there's no sign of biting or they're like having areas where they can escape from and just anything just making sure that the cage is still in a good condition and it's still safe and secure. Once I wipe everything down inside the cage, I will put that bedding that was in the bag that was clean, I'll put it back up in there. And I will also add in new bedding and hay with it as well. I like to use um, hay just because it helps keep the burrow stabilized. You don't need hay for all types of beddings, but I like to also use it just to make sure. Now you can go in and you can change up your cage accessories. You can change up the layout of it, of course. You can do whatever you want to it and this is also just like when we were spot cleaning you want to make sure you clean out the hamster wheel the water bottle the food bowl and the water bowl clean all these out make sure it's all working again test it um clean the hamster wheel make sure it's spinning right when you're putting it down then the last thing that you want to do once again is putting in your sprays your herbs um adding more food um, I recommend scatter feeding your food, but if you have a hamster for any type of reason, like health reasons, and you're trying to make sure that they're actually eating or they're a lot older, I definitely want to make it too hard for them to eat. And I also want to um, do it just because you want to make sure they eat since they are older. And it also helps you make sure that they are okay still when they're older or if they have any types of illness. So I will keep um, scatter feeding to a minimum. You can do like half and half if you want. That is what I'm, I've been doing with Rondo for a while and he's still on that right now. Since he's a lot older, 
Um, I definitely put a little bit in the food bowl to make sure he can get food without having to struggle or anything. And then also scatter feed because he is still a bit active at the same time, if it makes sense. I just want to make sure that he's okay. That is how you deep clean your cage. And that is the difference between spot cleaning and deep cleaning your hamster's cage. One you do once a week and it takes you like 10 minutes. The other one you got to do once a month. That one takes up a lot more of your bedding, a lot more time. And they also create probably the most mess. But if you guys enjoy this video, be sure to let me know by leaving a thumbs up. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing back there. I clearly, I just keep seeing him pop up right there. Thank you all so much for watching. In the next video, I will talk about the true expenses of when it comes to Omega Hamster. I would do a general breakdown of how much I was average, averagely spending per month on the hamster and how much it's going to cost you. Um, so definitely think about this before you decide to get a hamster, especially if you question if you'll be able to afford it because I'll be honest, hamsters, I, I don't know if it's just me spoiling my hamsters or what, but I was actually spending like a, quite a bit on him. So I would definitely do a video talking about that and just like just breaking down how much it actually costs to own a hamster and what to expect um, with pain and also give you like the general breakdown for like finding a vet for a small animal because not all vets can actually work on a hamster or is like good with working with hamsters. I will see you all in my next video. Bye.